All right, so we're going to sum it up today. I know last week was like a summary. I'm not going to go touch on any of that. Today I just want to give you some hope on your journey, okay? But let me start with this. Um, I think the whole thing's based on trust. Uh, I, 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 I feel like, personally, I feel like I have slight trust issues with people, certain people, <laughs> maybe... I don't know. You know, maybe the people who are close to me know me better than I do. Right now, the closest is probably Irene because she's she's my new secretary, so she is like always we're you know we're always communicating, and um, she's she could probably if she was here she could probably verify some of these things. That I feel like I have uh, difficulty trusting people, maybe with certain parts or areas of my life and and maybe with tasks I don't know why I think it's a, like a, um, it's it's a fear that there's a lot at stake that maybe they can mess it up and I can't risk that um, you know especially like with a company uh, sometimes we do big jobs like cutting down a big tree hanging over a house and I'm not going to just send anybody up there to do it, sometimes I'll do it myself because I don't trust nobody, you know. Um, so stuff like that. But I think there's other areas where uh, trusting people with telling them the deepest parts of you, you know, like um, depths. I don't know if you guys have someone you can confide in to tell them anything. But I think I know that that's a that's a soft spot for me. I don't do that with just anybody or even everybody or even all the time it's very you know I trust is is tough um, for me and I think that it's in life that's really important especially um, with people you have to be able to trust somebody you know, if you just don't trust anybody you're gonna be a wreck so I don't want to get there thank God I trust my secretary partially um, but uh, we're working on it um, but you know, it's not that I don't trust anybody. I just know that there's some, there's some, I'm reserved in some areas. Uh, but I, I think I'm not alone on this whole trust issue thing. Um, the, uh, you know, the Department of Defense. Who do, who has all of the codes for the nuclear bombs? The president has the key. One of the keys. Who else? Does it one guy have all of them? Yeah. Why not? We don't trust the fool. Okay? <laughs> nah, he's not a fool, but I mean. Why doesn't one person have all the coats? Because it has to be a joint decision. Yeah. I think there's um trust. We fail. And some things are really risky, and you can't risk somebody failing like that. Um, you know, a lot of people bash on Trump because he's so... What's the word? Racist? Uh, not, not quite what I was thinking. Um, uh, he, he just does things. Um, and sometimes it seems like he's not thinking, he just says whatever he wants, just... So, you know, just to like if he got mad one day and just hit the thing, freaking blow that person up, you know, it's risky. So we don't want to put all of that, all of our confidence in somebody to make that. that a lot can go wrong if he just blows everybody up. Um, so I think that there's not, I'm not alone on this, to having a little bit of trust issue. Some of it is important. Don't trust everybody with everything, like in that case. Um, uh, how, how about... Um, like biblical interpretation, is there one person you put all of your confidence in to tell you everything that's true about the Bible? Not even the Pope? Hmm. Some people do. Put all their confidence in the Pope. Maybe a pastor. But I think even the Bible tells us don't trust everything people say. You know, you study it yourself, figure it out. Um, <clears throat> what about uh, your spouse? Do you guys 
give complete authority? Have you given that to anybody to make the decision for you? Or would you? David, would you give that to your mom? Probably not. Come on, bro. She's, she's a good picker. Monica, would you trust your dad to pick your spouse? Okay. <laughs> That's tough. That is tough. I mean, some of the, the parts that are huge, important things to you, to give that authority to someone to make the decision for you, you'd have to really trust them. I don't know if anybody's worth, you know, or not worth, but worthy to make that decision. I mean, to give one person all the codes for all the nuclear bombs in the United States that could blow up the whole world. I don't know if they have that many bombs, but you would have to really trust that person. The sad thing is, I don't know that anyone's that trustworthy. We're all messed up. Even Monica. I'm sorry. I know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's the, that's the tough thing is that we all have, and I think I have trust issues. Maybe you guys have some trust issues. You don't want to let your parents choose your spouse for you. Shame on you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Believe me. Uh, my dad would, he would, he's tried all of my whole life. Yeah, but uh, why did it, why do we trust? Or sorry. Um. So last question: Who would you trust with your life, or who do we trust with our life here on Earth and for eternity? Who would you be willing to give all of that? authority, all of that power to have complete control over your life right now and your whole life in eternity. I think some people choose to give that authority to someone named Allah, maybe Muhammad, maybe Buddha, um, Krishna, the Pope. Um, to give all of that authority and trust to somebody with your whole life now and your whole life forever. I mean, beyond this, what do you got, 80, 90 years? I'm going to have probably 120. Um, no, hopefully all of us will. To give all that plus the infinity and beyond. Who would you trust with that? Oh, and you can't even trust somebody with your own spouse to give them your eternity. That's crazy. So, the question we've been dealing with is God's character. Is God really worthy of all of your faith and trust? Or does he have skeletons in his closet that cause him to be a little shady? And we, that's the question we started with when we went over this whole thing about the devil's origin. Did God create the devil? evil? Is he a fallen angel? Does it, uh, let me see, I wrote some questions down for you. Is God really good? Is he trustworthy if the devil, who is his greatest enemy, is actually God's design? Like it's all a flute. Is that what you say? Flute? It's all a hoax? Um, the God who's supposed to be completely perfect, and he can't be in the presence of evil, yet he made Satan evil. And with his very own hands created him. Um, or Satan in his, uh, or in heaven, or can evil exist in heaven because sin existed when the angels rebelled and chose to follow the, the devil and serve him instead of God. God can't be in the presence of evil, yet sin was in his presence when they fell. What, you know, how, how, does that, how does that happen? So I think the idea is there's some questions we have. And again, I ain't going to answer them. You do, okay? We gave you all the info, we gave you all the verses, your opportunity to study. But today I don't want to confuse you anymore. I just want to give you some hope on how 
or maybe what's helped me in this in the journey um, because this is not the end of your questions there's going to be another one there's going to be another one you know what's crazy is I was thinking about Adam and Eve in the garden like that original sin was when Satan said just try it I mean is he really is it really that bad? Do you really think you're going to die? Is what God said really true? And I think that that is like the fundamental thing or where maybe we get attacked the most is to try and doubt God. And uh, like in cases like this, is the devil a skeleton in God's closet? Is the devil just God's stepson? Or, you know, all the, all the things we've heard. Is he created by God to be evil, and God's punishing him, is that really just? Does God really do things against His own righteousness, or against His own law, and expect us, and punish us for doing them? I mean, is He a hypocritical? Uh, stuff like that, you know, which God gets accused for. And how are you going to answer all of that? Because I think... What, when it all comes up is when you start really standing up for what you believe in. Then people are going to start attacking you like, hey, whoa. You know, because it happens to a lot of people um, in, in colleges or in other circles where you start standing up for what you believe in, people will try to take you down. Um, and this is just one area, but the question that I think we need to answer is wherever you're at, in your trust level, maybe you got trust issues like I do, or maybe you got trust issues with something else. Wherever you're at in your trust issues and walk with God, I want you to know that God requires, demands, He asks for complete trust. He wants it all, everything. He wants complete trust. And how can you follow God if you've got, you know, this question on, does God really, is He shady? How can you truly follow and trust God if you feel like that? And, um, like I said, today i got just one point I want to give you that helps me whenever I get questions like that. Because I've, I've gone through it. I've had, man, I remember when I first was, given some questions. I think it took six months for me to get over it. You know, I was a wreck. Oh God, why could you do this? I can't even worship you. You know, um, you, know you get you get these things like, you know, say you have a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend and you find out they were talking to somebody else. And you're like, I'll never trust you again, you know? But it wasn't even true the whole time. Um, you know, maybe it was true. How do you get over it? I don't know. But that's the thing that's going on with God is that people, or maybe these doubts, maybe that come from the enemy, maybe that come from ourselves, come up to try to ruin the relationship between you and God. And the question we're having to ask, is it valid? Did God really cheat on you? Or, you know, is that, did your, did your girl really talk to the other guy? Or is it just, um, what's the word? Gossip. Is it just gossip? Uh, so anybody, uh, how, let, let's say, let me, let's ask Kimberly, let's say, uh, Kimberly, if somebody said, Kimberly, uh, I, heard, I saw your guy talking to some other girl and looked like he liked her. Say you knew you loved, the guy loved you. You knew it. How would you defend his honor or his character, you know? Would you just say, well, I guess he sucks. I guess I got to look for a good one. <laughs> or, what would you do? do you, I mean, it, let's say you were convinced beyond a doubt. He truly loved you. But, they saw him talking to Monica. Alone. <laughs> just talking. With his phone out, typing something. I mean... If I re really, really trusted him, then I know nothing would be, I guess, beyond, I guess, just, just a friendship with the other person. So, 
Yeah. But I guess we just have to feel ourselves that if we really trust them completely. Right. Not having to, not having a doubt. Uh huh. Yeah, because I think there's things that are going to come up. You're, you're, it's a relationship we have with God. God's invisible. He's invisible. You know, we can't just walk up to him and, hey, uh, did you do this? Can I, you know, it's, it doesn't work that way. You have a relationship with him, spiritual. Um, but how do, you, how do you fight against, how do you battle against some of these big doubts that come up, these questions that try to wreck you? What do you hold on to? Like Kim said, say her boyfriend was talking to Monica, and they were just talking. Somebody went over and said, I think your boy's cheating on you. And she would say, actually, you know what? I know he loves me because I got this here ring. You know? <laughs> so now what? You know, or, or, um, or, you know, I, I don't know. You just say, well, you know what? They're actually good friends. It's not like that or something. But if Kimberly had trust issues, she would say, that son of a, mm-mm, no way did he. And then she goes over there and beats Monica down and says, you never touch my man. <laughs> and, and it was all, it wasn't even like that, you know. Some people are like that with faith. Is it any little thing, turn your back on God. But, um, because they're going to come up. And, you know, there's people that try to tear you down. And you know what we've learned? There's actually an enemy that wants to wreck you. He's, he exists. And his name is El Diablo. Many names. Satan. Angel of Light. Some people don't agree. Uh, you know, whatever. He's got a lot of names. His goal is to wreck you. Like he said, he told Jesus, look, I want to, I want to take Peter down. Peter, and Jesus said, eh. No. Satan asked for you. No, you can't. Um, so, one thing. Uh, <clears throat> one thing that I think that helps me and maybe helps you. Um, and, and just to reiterate, uh, Luke 9.23, it says, that's what Jesus asked as well. If anyone wants to follow me, he must give up his life. He must take up his cross daily and follow me. So think about what he's asking. He's saying, if you want to follow me, if you want to be my disciple, if you want to be in this relationship with me, you need to die. And you need to fully trust me. That's what he's asking. You can't, you can't be on the fence. And that's how it is. I Hopefully, Kim, when she gets to time for her to marry her stud muffin. When she gets to that point, she needs to say, I will be the only woman ever, ever, in your life. You know, something like that. And she, you, there is nobody else. And Jesus asks the same thing from us. He's the only one. And he, you know what? He goes deeper. Um, I want full trust. I want full trust, and I want full access, authority over your entire life. And if you're not willing to give that to me, do not follow me. And it's not like, okay, I have questions, can I ask you about them? I, absolutely, he's willing. And that's what we're doing today. For some of you guys that have questions, we're trying to address them. But know that he, what he, what he desires is full trust. And that's what he works with, called faith. Fully trusting. So, um, <clears throat> why would anyone have any reason, why would anybody have any reason to trust this guy here? The big G-O-D. Alright, you guys have any thoughts? Why would we have any reason to trust him? Did he, does he really have skeletons in his closet? Is he really a um, um, crazy lunatic murderer? Is he really somebody who creates evil just to play with us? Or, you know, what, what is... How do we know we can trust God? 
He's the creator. He's the creator. Okay. You guys? Why do you trust him, Kim? All right, he's the creator. That's why I trust him. Good enough? Elmer, why do you not trust him? You don't know. All right, good enough. Anybody else? Because he said to. Because he said to. You better trust me, you, you punk, or else I'll send you to hell. Is that a good reason? <laughs> Because he said to? I'm just, just asking. Alright, trust me because he's creator. Trust because he said to. Trust me. Why is God worthy of... And for some of you guys who are baptized, you said, Take me. I trust you. Why? Probably because we have faith in something bigger. Okay, what is the bigger... Like, we don't just live life just because. Faith, so faith is not actually blind. There's an object to it. You know, faith is, is in Him. Maybe you don't know all the whys and whats, but you know who you're trusting in. But why do you have faith in Him? Because you know that there is something bigger, you said? Mm -hmm. Alright. There's a bigger plan. David, any thoughts? You, you took the plunge. Why'd you do it? I mean, like, regardless of, like, the skeletons in this closet, like, it's not hard to see, like, the good things that he's done. Like, especially, like, in my life, in other people's lives. So, okay. Like, there's more than just, like, those questions that people right. have, you know? Right. Okay, so you see, maybe his, what would you like to call that? Would you want to say his, uh, I'd, I'd say track record. Uh, you could say his history. I don't know. What would you say? That word. His history. History. Goodness. Josh, did you say anything? Oh, you he's said the creator, but right. also his power. Okay, because he's powerful. Yeah. So he deserves our trust. Anybody? Is anybody more powerful? Is he the most powerful? Anybody come close? Not even. What's that guy's name from Avengers? Thanos. Thanos. Not even him, huh? Why is he worthy of your trust? Should we get shooken up every time we hear something? Because we're we're gonna have we're, we've got a couple more topics that are gonna they might do some damage. <laughs> So I'm just getting you ready. Next week we're talking about evil. Where did that come from? All right. Well, anyway, it's gonna get time's gonna get ahead of us. But I'm gonna give you one reason why I do, um, and it's uh, it really is in one word. That's why. When all else fails, when I got tons of questions. I just have to remember what he did, and it, it all seems to make sense. And let me ex let me explain why. Uh, let's read together Colossians 1:15. Uh, we've got a, if you wouldn't mind getting Colossians 1:15. And uh, anybody else have a Bible? Not even our best reader. Where is your Bible? All right. Well, if you have a phone, since this is your last day with phones. Next week we're going to do something new. Uh, if you can look up Romans 5.8, somebody who has a phone. And Kim, if you can please read Colossians 1.15. Come on, nice and invited. <laughs> Romans 5.8. Her eyes can't find it, she said. I was looking for it. Uh, anybody else have it? Colossians. Capitulo uno. Verse 15. Alrighty, get us, kid. He is the image of the invisible God and the firstborn of every creature. Alright. Who is Jesus the image of? The invisible God. 
So who do we have questions about right now? God. We want to know what God is like. He came down in flesh. What is He like? He's like Jesus. All right? He is the image of the invisible God. If we want to know what He's like, He's like Jesus. So, when you have some trust issues, it's like, well, God, look, I can't see you. I don't know what you're doing, what you're like. But I know about Jesus, and I know what He's done. All right, so he's the image of the invisible God. And let's read Romans chapter 5, verse 8. I think Josh has it. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still, in, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. All right. Everybody get that? You mind reading that one more time? But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Okay. God demonstrates, proves His own love for you, for me, for us, in that while we were still wretched sinners, He died for us. Alright, now what does that mean? Okay, God, sounds like you did some stuff in the past that makes me question trusting you. <clears throat> Whether it's true or not, I'm having a hard time. But, why the heck would you come to earth to die for me when I did not deserve it? Why would you do that? Alright, I think that's the big question. For someone as shady as people claim him to be, why would he do that? does not make sense. Why would he kill himself for us? I, just, I don't know. It just, I can't, can't really comprehend that. Why he proved his love to humanity in that while we were still sinners, while we did not want him, he died. For, is that what it says? He died for us. Christ died. Christ died for us. He died for people who didn't deserve it or even want it. Okay? So when I think about the questions, his, I think about His history of goodness, His power, all of that. I look yep. at it differently, like um, the the rate of abortion, the rate of child's death, the rate of death itself. Why am I still here? Mm -hmm. I was supposed to be aborted. My grandma wanted me aborted for my mom. My dad wanted to kill me when I was a kid. And so many times I went partying and should have been dead, but I'm still here. Right. And the, that God. The guy is powerful and he has a plan. That's how I look at it. Yep. Let me read you some, I want to read you some lyrics. I found this song. <clears throat> Alright, here we go. Let me see if you know this song. <clears throat> the angels stood in awe at the sight they saw the night you were betrayed. You could have saved yourself, but you held back the heavens and let them carry you away. You laid your kingdom down. They handed you a crown of thorns. You were torn, but cried, let your will be done. It wasn't nails that held you to the cross. It was love. It was love. It was your love you took. You took our place, carried our guilt and shame all for us, all for us. All for us, it wasn't nails that held you, it was love. I just want to read you the second verse. To think you chose this cup, knowing that, knowing all that was to come, oh, the grace that poured from you. Before your final breath, through your tears you said, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. 
You looked up to the sky and let out a final cry. It is done. Hope has won. Lord, let your kingdom come. And he goes back to the chorus. It wasn't nails that held you to the cross. It was love. I love that song. It's awesome. All right, so think about that. This all-powerful God, the Creator, allowed humanity to nail Him on a cross. And I, I was listening to someone this week and say, if this God was so powerful, why didn't He just disintegrate everybody in His sight? Jump right off the cross, kick the guards in their butt. Why didn't He just do that? Kill Satan. At any moment, He could stab the fool and he's dead. You know, <laughs> with this sword that you know, this awesome sword. Do you really think nails could hold God down? I don't think so. What? And, and that's what that's so cool about the song is that when you, when you start to really look into God and why He does things, what would hell hold him on the cross? One thing alone is love. He didn't, there's no, nothing is more powerful than him. Everything was created through him. He made everything. Only one thing was love. He knew what he wanted to do. He knew that by doing this, he would save humanity, which is awesome. So when I think about why is God worthy of my trust, I look to that. I look to the cross, I look to what Jesus did. And that's and I and I, I think that that's where like we're talking about Kimberly and her future her husband. At some point he has to win her heart to know that she is convinced he loves her. She's convinced that he is for her. She's convinced that he is the one even if he is a little dark. He's not, I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's convinced. And, I, and that's where I came to that, I came to that uh, understanding myself. When I took the plunge into the water, I did not fully understand all this. The relationship I had with God was just starting. It was, it was new, just beginning. But I had this overwhelming feeling or this overwhelming understanding that I cannot keep running from this love. Like He won. You got me. You, you grabbed my heart. You won me. And now here I am. And I think that's, that's the big question for you guys to answer today. Is that you've been, you know, we've been talking about where did the devil come from, all this stuff, theological stuff, which you really need to know, you should know, so that you can defend what you believe. But this is not, that is not the only question that's going to come up. There's a lot more things. And what are you going to hold on to during those discussions? When you go to school and they say, uh, actually, Adam and Eve was a hoax. Phony. Sorry. And you're like, what the heck? You know, you, you know, I because I, I went to college. Somebody stood up and said that you don't actually believe that stuff. Dude. I was like, well, uh, <laughs> they didn't target it at me. They were just talking to somebody else, and I didn't know what to say. I, I don't know how to defend that. What the heck? Um, but this this is the anchor for our souls. If this did not happen, if he did not rise from the dead. You and I have absolutely nothing. Nothing. This is everything. Jesus' death and resurrection proved He loved us, proved He was the Son of God when He rose. Awesome. And that's the big question for you guys, is do you have major trust issues with God? Or are you able and willing to truly follow Him. Because when truly following means is surrendering everything to Him. All authority for your life. If you don't want to let your parents decide who marries you, when you got baptized, when you gave your life to Jesus, you gave Him authority to choose. You gave Him that authority. 
You decide. Really? I, I, I understand that now. The decision that I make to whoever I decide to marry is not me alone. He's my king. And, and whatever he says, that's what I do. And, you know, as long as I got certain conditions, oh, God, she, well, she can't be like this, okay? Anything else I'm good for, but few conditions, you know? But you have to be willing to give him all of your trust. Is he worthy of it? That's the question you need to answer. Because there's, like I said, there's going to be questions coming up. We're going to do our best to answer them. But this God who's far beyond our, our minds and our imagination, He's far beyond it, greater. I think the only skeleton He's got in His closet, I do think He has some, the only one. And I think what the song says is that He loves you way more than you can imagine. That's probably the only skeleton there is, is that He loves you way more than you can imagine. That's as bad as it gets. The only skeleton is that He would go far beyond a cross to save you. It's crazy. So, when you're thinking about this, and, and we're going to have more stuff we go talk about, Jesus points to God's love. That is God on a cross. I, I, and, and I do. I, I gave my life to Him. I said, oh, I trust Him. And, and He's proven it, even in the amount of time that I've been walking with Him. He should have left me already. You know, if, if anyone cheated, it was me. Okay, it wasn't Him. And, and that's, and he, but He still took me back kind of thing. You know, there's been plenty of times where I've, I've made poor choices. I've chosen to date Maybe people that I should have never dated, um, or or done things I should have never done, watched things. Um, but he's forgiven me, and he's and he's taken me back, and I and I've experienced it. So I may not have all the answers. You may not have all these answers. But it's important for us to love him not only with our hearts, but with our minds too, to understand why. You know, we know the feeling. And we also know why. Because this is, this is actually, it actually happened. It's not a, just a story. Jesus really did die. Really did rise. It's, it's not phony. Um, even though many claim it to be. And we're seeing the results of that. Just in people like Josh said, he sees it in his own life. He should have been dead. You know? I, so... Just as we go, maybe you don't have it all figured out right now. Where did the devil come from? I need to know. Yeah, keep studying. It's fine. But don't forget about this. Don't forget that. Because this is where it all sums up. This is the climax of the story. And whether God really did things in the past that made him look bad, I would say no. I would say no. I think if you, the deeper you look, you may not understand it, you can understand enough to see that he's clean. Um, but we have a few more because you guys, you know, your friends have questions. And how are you going to answer them? So, you know, hopefully you have some way of doing that. So like I said, next week we start a new one. And we have a guest speaker coming in who's a master apologist. And it should be awesome. So I hope you can come. But let's just pray today and we'll end.